Welcome back to Dog Twang. I'm Dave. Happy New Year. Um, so we've got a uh, kind of a laid back uh, R&B-ish pop groove, I guess, today. Um, it's in D major. Um, I'm not going to say what the progression is. Maybe somebody wants to take a shot at that. Leave it in the comments. Um, but the chords are as follows. So we've got D, B minor. A, G, then just back to the B minor, G, and A again. Hold that A in extra measure. Okay? So, and, and by not stating the, the, the trivia question was, what, what would be the numeric um, um, uh, progression st stated in terms of uh, the, the, the chord numbers in that key of D. Um, so if somebody want to take a shot at that, that would be cool and fine. So mainly I'm using B minor pentatonic, okay? So when you're in a major key, like that, strictly major key, I guess you could say. We're not changing keys in this tune. It's just this one section. To that sound. That's called the relative major and minor. You can hear that a lot, even just as a little bass line sometimes. You know, a lot of a lot of tunes kind of alternate as their main section between uh, those um, relative major and minor chords in different uh, orders and, and um, uh, uh, rhythms and so forth. So that's kind of the main idea, and that's what gets us to minor pentatonic. You know, they said it was major. Why aren't we using a major? And you know, if you carry that relative aspect over, you've got D major pentatonic and B minor pentatonic. Right? They literally contain the same notes, okay? Um, but the position that you play in matters because we want to, you know, hear what I'm going for, and, and I may have kind of crammed a lot into that intro, like I, I'm afraid I do sometimes. I, I want to show you several things, but, you know, uh, uh, in this lesson portion, I'm really going to stick to um, this minor pentatonic main uh, position on the seventh fret right here and kind of build, you know, up and down from that a little bit, not do so much covering of the whole neck. Um, but of course, if um, it makes sense to you, you know, you transfer that stuff up to higher octaves and stuff, you know, I'll show you a little bit of that too. So here's kind of basically what is going on here. I did that couple of times in that um, intro, this little chord form right here. So let me, that's what I just did there was just sort of a, kind of to get our ear dialed in and just kind of that we're using this seventh position here. But let me start by, by showing you some smaller chord voicings, smaller meaning not the whole bar chord, right? Um, other ways of playing those triads that really kind of get you into this position and and can almost sort of become the part of your lead playing itself once you separate the notes in these simple triad forms. So if we just go through the progression starting on D, okay, look at that. That's that really is. It's like you're taking half of that B minor pentatonic and like make covering, you know, if those were dots on a, on a piece of paper, you know, you're, you're literally looking at um, that B minor pentatonic scale. It's really a D um, uh, major scale, or a major chord right there, triad. Okay, you can do it with just these three. You don't have to, if you want to get that real solid octave and fifth sound in there, you can do that. 
and also kind of set you up to see that. We'll get to that in just a few minutes, but see how all that connects. Now, so there's your D. Another way you can do the B minor is just add this one. So see, we're, we're taking portions of these larger bar chord forms and, and just reducing them to a few strings. There's the other octave. So D, B minor. Now, without even really moving out of this position, I mean, we are going to slightly, but rather than kind of, you know, covering, you know, seven frets here, we can go. And then for that uh, A, okay, so it's a part of this, if you think of it as cage, right, there's that, that shape for the A. But we're just doing these three. And that's a great little shape right there. You can slide, you can take this one out, and you get, you get that, that good uh, sixth harmony right there, right away. And um, uh, you, you, any, any combination of those. Really play around with that, and then the the G just moves that down to. So we got uh, then back to if we go through the whole progression. Okay. Now, of course, you could use your do an A down here. G. B minor. Yeah, there's moving that shape we did up here for A down to here, it becomes D. Okay, so really get into that, that major key sound. But, you know, take your progressions, and that's one thing you can do right away with a lot of jams. Take the chords in the progression and find a bunch of different locations for triads for those chords. You're on your way then because you're already moving around, you're mapping, you're really, you know, starting to solo before you even think of it in terms of a scale or something, right? It's a chord tone approach to um, single note playing. And also harmonies, because if you, if you play some of those together, you can um, you can almost do this sort of you know really freestyle. You know, say I do. Now I do that a lot on a lot of videos, right? So if I'm, that's a G also, kind of like how we were doing our D down here. If I move that up to here, that's a, a G. You see that? This isn't one of those where it's like, oh, here's how to play this song. This is how to play any song that you come up with in terms of a, a, a progression idea and start doing a little second guitar arrangement for that. What's really nice, too, is that if you're making or, or playing with a band, or even with just another guitarist or something, but especially if you have bass and stuff, um, and, or if you're, if you're multi-tracking yourself with these making loops and stuff, is, you know, sometimes you can, you start off, a lot of times I'll start off with a, a main, you know, and then I'll, I'll, do a track of this kind of more broken up stuff, a little bit more, you know, sophisticated triad stuff, and then mute that original, you know, strummy track, and you'll and you're left with this more interesting arrangement. And by the time you get your bass and drums and stuff in there, that 
sometimes sounds more musical than just always banging it out with the strumming. Um, a lot of times I'll do both. I'll put one of them over on one side of the mix, you know, turn it down. And then I'll have a little... Maybe over on the other corner of the mix or something. So, you know, I don't want to take on everything all at once here, but I like to share little ideas of how this is all being created with you as we go because it's, it, it demystifies it, right? It's not as complicated as it sounds when you listen to, or when you see that that little 48 seconds of intro <laughs> that I'm doing there, right? It all, it all breaks down into pretty simple concepts. And the stylization of it is the thing that takes time and the thing that's really fun because um, that is, it, it's everybody, if, if we all took this progression, made our own backing track, you'd have this, this wonderful mosaic of, of range of different uh, a diversity of what all those tracks would sound like. Nobody's would sound the same, right? It's a cool thing about music in general, I guess. So that's kind of the main thing I wanted to share with you. Now, how to really, you know, integrate that? Well, keep it simple, right? Um, so minor pentatonic, B minor. I did that a couple times that intro. Let me stop this for just a second. What note is that? First of all, which chord or we're on the third chord in the progression? So I went. Okay. So I'll help you out here. It's the, the third in that A triad. We did it up here to be that note. Now, that's got like a lot of flavor right there. Let's do that again. I'll have to wait for it to come around. But I wanted to do that, right? I was showing you that note, but you, 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 you play around with something like that, you find the place where you really like that. And that happened to me when I was recording that intro demo. I, 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 it sounds so nice, you gotta do it twice. Like the second time around, I found myself doing the same thing. It almost became like the vocal line, like if I were composing a tune. To me, that was like where it wanted to go. That's the note in the lead line that, uh, I want to emphasize in that part of the progression. That's just my, you know, experience of walking down that trail. I just want to take that little step right there, right? Um, but those little things, when they feel really right to you, embrace that. Uh, you add that into your composition. Go back to that and build on it as a theme of what your overarching melodies are. You know, that sounds a little pie in the sky if we're just talking about beginning improvisation here. Um, but the point of that is to trust the thing that sounds good to you, the thing that feels right. And that, that's all you need to know. And uh, just keep investing in that. But theoretically speaking, that's what's going on there. I'm using this, this B minor pentatonic and then some select chord tones on different chords. Um, the fifth, as we've talked about many times on this channel, is always a go-to thing. So you want to start uh, uh, on top of all the rest of this. I know it's a lot. Take the pieces that, that you need right now and leave the rest. Don't try to do it all at once. But those of you that, that, that are, have been working on that or are re ready to really uh, you know, r start kind of tracking where you are beyond just the scale that you're using. Um, 
look at it as the scale overlaid with these chord tones. And the fifths, you want to be able to identify that for your different chords. So D. Right there. So let's just emphasize that and see if what I say is true. There's the end of it. Let's go start right on that fifth. that starting on the fifth of the D and and you know this kind of stuff is nice because it really features chords you got a third there's some other videos on this channel one of them's called um, R and B double stops or something like that. It might actually be in D too. It, it, it's probably in D or E. Um, either way, the, the, the theory is going to work out for you. It, it shows a lot of those slidey kind of that kind of stuff. I'm not going to break all that down today because for the sake of this video's length and its content being you know more centered around this kind of um, composition aspect of your soloing. But there was stuff in that uh, intro that, that consisted, that was using that <laughs> stuff. So I wanted to mention that. Um, might do a part two on this and really break that down because those are nice for this style. Those are real smooth, um, um, bluesy licks that, are, that have a real major ring to them. A couple times I, I, I doubled up on this one. I did almost like a, a country band. Just sort of like I'm playing the, these pentatonic uh, notes with this one held down. So sometimes it just, you know, fattens it up a little bit if you've got more than one note ringing out at a time. And th those kinds of ideas really work well for that. Even if they're not elaborate, just put that in every once in a while. You know. So again, go back to the to what you know. Go back to home base every time. starts to, you know, turn into something that suddenly looks like it's, oh, wait a second, now what's going on? Well, <clears throat> you know, again, watch these videos a few times. Stop them when you feel like there's something that's really speak. Oh, I like the way that sounds. Work on that one, isolate that one concept that we're talking about here, put the backing track on and work out on it. Mortar it in to your ear, your brain, your thinking, and your muscle memory. Then you can kind of shift your attention. You're going to be doing those things. Your, your hand's going to be doing them. And you won't be thinking about every aspect of it. And then you can go on to the next conceptual thing to add to that and just kind of keep, you know, adding clay to that ball or whatever, right? Um, I'm just going to play a little bit more, get you to a practice loop, which is the same one that I played over in the intro, and I hope to talk to many of you soon, and everybody that's new, there's been a lot of new subscribers lately, so welcome. Um, we love having everybody aboard and appreciate any uh, comments or input that you have about the channel. Mm -hmm.